If you click on the WEF website, you know, Davos, you will see that many of their partners are the biggest corporations around the world. You will also learn that many world leaders were once members of their globalist schemes. But to say there's some sort of organised global conspiracy is just that. And you are a conspiracy theorist. Hello there, you 5.2 million awakening wonders. I'm bringing you a fantastic conversation today with Nick Corbishley. He was a guest on my podcast, Under the Skin, available from Luminary. And he talked about the WEF, various people that have gone through the WEF ranks and schemes that educate them and form all kinds of connections. And to tell you the truth, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't have time for mumbo jumbo and claptrap. I'm just trying to understand how power works, how a big business, corporations and the media work collegiately to achieve achieve mutually desirable outcomes. If you want to come and see me live, I'm all over the UK, Bristol, Plymouth, Blackpool, Glasgow, fantastic British places. There's a link in the description. It's a fantastic show. The gloves are off, unexpurgated, accessible, available. I even do a meditation at the end and a question and answer session. If you want to come, Blackpool, Bristol, come see me. I'll have a fantastic time. Now, in this part of the conversation from Under the Skin with Nick Corbishley, we're talking about the WEF, the st astonishing array of world leaders that have been through affiliate schemes that the WEF run. And how figures like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg and Larry Page, all significant tech giants and influential figures, I'm sure you'd agree, have had explicit palpable involvement with the WEF. Stay to the end of the video because I want your comments, I want your insights and I want your understanding. Then you was going to start bad-mouthing dear Angela Merkel, probably just on the basis of a, a, an unflattering haircut. I mean, she was she was another one. She was, I think, she was in the same class as Tony Blair and um, Gordon Brown. And uh, she, so, I mean, you're talking about the head of state of Germany who was in control of Germany for something like sixteen, seventeen years. Um, her health minister was also a young global leader. Or I can't remember his young global leader or global leader for tomorrow, but let's just say more or less the same thing. Macron was a young global leader. Um, so I mean, like you've got there, you've got you know the heads of state or the you know the, the, the government leaders of the three largest economies in Europe, um, and you can see this across the board. In two thousand nineteen the World Economic Forum signed a strategic partnership with the United Nations, which at that time was kind of like dubbed by Open Democracy, the website of Open Democracy, as like the ultimate kind of like public-private partnership. It's like the privatization of the United Nations. So we have the world's most important supranational institution more or less signing an agreement which, which set the World Economic Forum on a similar level to, to the United Nations. And, and I do, and like, if people are beginning to wonder about this, they're thinking this is too crazy to be true. I mean, I, I really do um, ask them, beg them to check this out. Go to the World Economic Forum website, check out, check out the list of the partners. So, I mean, like, you, you will see the the biggest corporations we're talking about 500 600 corporations and hedge funds and pension funds and banks and sovereign wealth funds the, this is where this is where the world's money resides and so if you look at a it's actually they very conveniently set it up for people so you've got like it's set up alphabetically so you've got a for apple you've got a for amazon You've got A for Alliance. You've got A for Accenture. You've got B for Black BlackRock. You've got B for Blackstone. You've got B for Bayer. Um, C for City. I mean, like every single one of the major two big to fail banks in the West are um, partners of the World Economic Forum. It's it's weird how we've reached this stage, and we're not questioning the amount of influence this organization does wield. And aside, I have to say this, aside from the political influence, I mean, like the, the political members of 
the Young Global Leadership Program, the, the Young, Young Global Leaders Program, you have the world's most important tech um, CEOs and founders. So you've got um, Bill Gates was in the same class as Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. You've got Mark Zuckerberg. You've got Larry Page of Google. You've got the founder of Wikipedia. Um, you've got Jack Ma. Um, so, I mean, that it's, you just keep looking at the list. It's like, this is a very cosy club. It is literally almost like the definition of George Carlin's. You know, it's just one big club. And they've created it and it's been going since the early 70s. And it is now almost on a par with the United Nations. When you have that concentration of power, Nick, do you, do you ever wonder what would be required to challenge it? I mean, in a sense, democracy is the only thing that ever could. The only thing that could ever challenge this, surely, is a sort of a populist uprising that brings the power political figures across nations that are outside of the existing political systems that will operate on behalf of... Of the, I suppose that's why populism gets such a bad name and immediately tagged up as yes. far right and fascist and all of that because that's the only possible way of challenging such a consolidated mm -hmm. power base. Well, yeah, I mean, if you... What happened in the UK with Jeremy Corbyn and the way he his reputation was more or less... Well, was dragged through the mud through... I mean, they tried everything until they managed to kind of find success with um, anti-Semitism, with charges of anti-Semitism. But wherever you look, if you get uh, a genuine leader or a genuine party that really does represent some kind of challenge, then they will do anything to stop that. And, I mean, what they've done in Canada is, I think, is absolutely terrifying. When I saw the... I mean, Christia Freeland... She's the economy minister of, of um, Canada. She's the deputy prime minister of Canada. She's also on the managing board, management board of the World Economic Forum. Um, <laughs> so she was the person, she was the person who came out and said, like, you know, she announced not only to Canada, but I would say to the world, the world should have been listening to what they did with the bank accounts of these people that they basically said we are we are freezing your bank account because you you had the temerity to donate money to an organization that was not remotely illegal until we decided it was and um, that is the definition of tyranny and it is Weirdly, I mean, like for anybody on the right, for anybody who is interested in kind of like liberal politics or right wing politics, this is also an attack on private property. For anybody on the left, it should be terrifying because it's an attack on just basic liberty. Um, the concept that from one day to the next, a bank, and it's not like banks are, should be the most trusted institutions or the most trusted organizations. And they are given the power to decide, you know, this person's a bit dodgy. We'll just freeze his money. And, I mean, there's no due process. There's no, you know, how do you get your money back? How do you reopen? How do you get your insurance um, account set up again? I mean, it, it's, it's a staggering amount of power with zero uh, accountability and zero oversight. And that should be on the minds of everybody who is worried about government over overreach in the coming, I don't know, in the coming days. <laughs> She's in the WEF. Crystalline, what was her yeah. name again? Crystal Freeland. Crystal Freeland. She's a, she, she's a very interesting person that should definitely be, um, because she has lots of um, connections with the Ukraine conflict as well. Um, so, I mean, like, she's definitely somebody who's worth researching in more depth. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. The thing I like most about it is how that information comes together, how undeniably there are conversations taking place, how clearly there's an agenda, how obviously there are established ideals and parameters that are formulated centrally and played out across the globe.
I'm against that kind of globalisation. I think people should run their own communities, their own schools, their own hospitals. I think power should be with the people. Decentralised power wherever possible. Wherever power centralises, it creates problems. You can argue it's necessary sometimes to have a counter-hegemony. You need some sort of force to oppose that military tyranny and terror and all these kind of ideas. But clearly it's gone too far. Clearly we need a dissolution of power that's what's required a kind of devolution people running their own communities that's what i believe in it's something i'm pretty passionate about as a matter of fact so let me know in the comments below what you feel about it give this video a like if you're not a subscriber yet subscribe to this video if you enjoyed this video have a look at this one or this one and remember, only 48% of you are subscribers, so get subscribing to this channel, please. If you want to come and see me live, I'm appearing live. It's a fantastic experience. You'll love it. There's a link in the description to get your tickets if you want to come see me. Most importantly of all, please, for heaven's sake, stay free.